children we are live this is fucking live in montreal and canada we're in fucking canada and that is my favorite city i'm really happy to be here i haven't been here in a long time i was on a very famous tv show called fête de la maison which was actually it means three guys fucking in a house in san francisco that's what i did and i'm not ashamed because i made a lot of money from it and that's fine that's what i'm talking about that's yeah Right, and that was 20 years ago. I was in this city, and I and the women are beautiful, really beautiful. Some of the, the bitches and hoes be screaming right over there. And I met a woman like 20 years ago. You shut the fuck up. I'm talking. Sorry, live TV, really sorry. But I met a woman, and I thought she was perfect for me. She was great. She was beautiful. She was French, and she, she said $200, and I said, fine. That's what I'm saying. Tonight, by the way, we need good ratings. This is the this is live on the movie network right now, which is fucking cool, and you guys are here. We like we want a hit show, not a shit hoe. That's what I'm saying. Just a play on words. Tonight the Olympics was on. I don't care if anybody watched it because we're here. And I, I want to be like a bobsled and I want four guys to just ride me down a hill right now. I don't and kids, by the way. I love being here. Kids, you know, they, I, I don't speak any language at all, really. But kids, like boys that speak French in America, they call them girls. It's a beautiful country here. It is, thank you, one person that is a girl boy. There are a lot of men women here. Let's hear for that. The men women here that represent. I'm just checking where the Hermes are. You're fucking my head up. You stay away from me. Some of you are creepy. I can see this by looking at you. You're weird, dude. I don't know you. But you're looking creepy, and I know what happens. You're out here in nature, you're here in the countryside, you see a squirrel go by, and you think, ooh, and you fucking look at that, and you would tag that with like a roof and all rifle. Knock that thing out. Don't do it. You'd be fucking a squirrel, so stop it. You wake up with you, something you really like, you'll have a squirrel on your dick, and that would be horrible. I'm sorry, there's an asshole at every show. I just hope it's not me. And you two are very nice people, so unless you've ever met any other people, but. I'm really sorry. I apologize. I have to pee. Take off your glasses. You know, these are zingers. And he's nice. He wouldn't hurt a flea, but he would finger a spider. I can tell by looking. There's a time and a place for filth, by the way. And it is right here tonight. You guys came here for it. I apologize for anything that I will say and for everything that a lot of people are going to say. You know, I just have a problem with authority, which is why I believe in censorship not being an issue. I'll open up the refrigerator. I'll see a yogurt. It'll say used by September 8th. I'll be like, fuck you. I'm Bob Saget. That's what I say to the yogurt. That's how fucked up I am. Right. Brought my dog to Montreal. Very dog friendly city. The problem I have with my little dog. Oh, sorry. That's my cock. The problem I have with my dog. It's a Maltese and it's been eating its own poo, which is fucked up. And the doctor, I'm just telling you, it's fucked up. I don't know if you know that. But the doctor gave me a powder that you put on the poo and the dog stopped eating it. But I tried that with my mother and it didn't work. My mother won't see this. She's in California. Fuck that. I'm sorry. I love her. She's a good man. I shouldn't talk about her. She, actually, sorry. I had to take her to the emergency room a couple weeks. Actually, I didn't have to take her. I just couldn't fucking stand her anymore. I said, do people take her? I was sitting there, I said, I can't watch her suffer, take her in the other room. That's what I said. Let me talk about my penis for a little bit. Do you know how you know if you have a big dick? Exactly, you don't. Right. If my dick could talk, it would tell me to shut the fuck up. My dick is two inches from the floor when I'm on the floor. You know who makes a really good martini? Gay guys. They make really good martinis. That is what I'm going to lead to a song with. I'd like to sing a song, because that's what I'm going to fucking do. 
because we are on a tight time frame, and we have an amazing show for you tonight, by the way. You don't even know how great this show is, so you should applaud that as I show you into this son of a bitch right here. Thank you, sir. What is your name, sir? Pierre. What is your name? Pierre. Good, Pierre. Pierre. That's fucking interesting. Pierre into my zipper. Thank you. Thank you, miss. You're in the back. You like it in the rear? Okay. That took a lot of work to get to this point. This is a song. It's a sing-along. If you know it, then sing along. And if you don't know it, then probably don't sing it. This is live and there's no delay. What the fuck? This is a song I wrote. It's a country song. It's a love song. Sing it if you know it. And it's, an, it's offensive. He was my friend. I was never alone. He dug a hole. And he buried his bone. But there was one night that I still can't recall when I got really drunk and my dog licked my balls. My dog licked my balls. Oh, sing it, Montreal. My dog licked. You sound like angels. He was just one foot tall. It was a little thing, just like your wiener. My dog licked my balls. It's not over. I fell to the floor. All that booze made me faint. He was scared I was hurt. And stuck his nose in my taint. It's all that rhymes with faint. I looked it up on Wikipedia. I woke with a start, I couldn't pretend, because I just hooked up with my very best friend. Oh, my dog licked my You sound like angels in heaven. My dog licked my Everybody's singing, it scares me. Picked him up at the mall. That's where you get a thing like that. Who knew one day he licked my mom? But then one day he died. All oh. oh, the house. Oh. And I sat there and cried. It was common. What? All alone in my house I sat. But then I got myself up and I went out and bought me a cat. And that cat licked my balls. That was a coincidence. That pussy licked my balls. He choked on a hairball because he took it all. Oh, man, it made me really miss my dog. Because my dog licked my balls. Just the women. Women with balls in Montreal. My dog licked my balls. I miss him so much because my dog licked my balls. Thank you. Thank you. And break that shit. Are you guys ready? This is really amazing what you're going to see tonight. Are you guys excited? Ladies and gentlemen, and half ones, half, half Hermie, the British paper The Guardian called our first comedian a comedy hero for a generation. Whereas the Times said, if you see this man, call the police immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a really cool guy that I just got to meet tonight, Mr. Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Good evening, Montreal. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. We all like a laugh, yes? Yeah! yeah. Everyone here likes laugh. I think everyone likes laugh. Here's an interesting fact. The average person laughs out loud ten times a day. Not everyone, obviously. If you work in a hospice or with adults with learning difficulties, it could be ten times that. A lot of 
lot of people text while they're driving. I'm not excusing it, but we've all done things we regret when we're drunk. We have all done things we regret when we're drunk. Some of you may be with one of them this evening. <laughs> I was in a hotel having breakfast recently, and the waiter came up to me. He said, you want white or brown toast? I said, all toast is brown. You're thinking of bread. <laughs> well, if my grandmother knew how much money I spent on her funeral, she would be spinning in her ditch. Does anyone in here, does anyone in Montreal this evening, does anyone believe in the supernatural? Ghosts and spirits and the like, anyone? It's actually, it's actually easy to tell if your house is haunted. It isn't. <laughs> Grow up. I was watching Fox News, and I heard the newscaster on Fox say, at least one person killed in suicide bomb attack. I thought, yeah, obviously. That is the minimum requirement you need. Whenever I'm in the locker room at the gym, I'm always embarrassed by the fact my penis is so much bigger than everyone else's. But then in fairness, it is erect. Ten percent of women have cried in a store fitting room. I guess they weren't expecting to see me in there. <laughs> My girlfriend bought a t-shirt. She bought a t-shirt for eighty dollars. That's a ridiculous amount to spend on a t-shirt, am I right? Eighty dollars just for a t-shirt. It said D and G on the front. I suppose, fair enough, one of her boobs is bigger than the other. I saw a transvestite in a mini skirt. I thought, I chose a lot of balls. I tell you what I know about dwarves. Very little. I was out on the street. I saw a guy with a guide dog and a white stick. I went up to him. I said, you must be blind. He said, tell me something I don't know. I said, there's a tree over there. I should, I should probably talk about this before we go any further with this evening, because it's, you know, it's a triple X show. So I should talk about how political correctness works in stand-up comedy, how PC relates to what I do for a living, stand-up. Okay, so basically how stand-up relates to comedy is if you're directly involved in something or affected by something, you get a free pass. You're allowed to joke about that thing. So, for example, disabled people can joke about disability. Homosexual people can joke about being uh, gay. Uh, black or Asian people can joke about race. Those are the rules. So, these two pedophiles walk into a park. <laughs> It's a great feeling when you get a woman you've been chasing for miles. <laughs> but you know, I love it when a woman says those magic words that mean she's definitely up for sex that night. This drink tastes funny. <laughs> I'm joking. You can't taste it. I've got a tip for the ladies, or if you like, I could put the whole thing in. <laughs> Just a short one. Are there any couples in? We've got couples in this evening? <laughs> Lots of couples, okay. What do you think, couples? What do you think the most important thing is in a relationship? What do you think? Sex? Sex? Well, have you been together a week? It's not even in the top five. What are you talking about? Any, any other thoughts? Most important thing in a relationship? Money? Are you with a prostitute now? What's... Really? <laughs> I had other thoughts. 
most important thing. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you, sir. Trust. I think that's the most important thing in a relationship. Because if you're with a woman and you don't 100 percent trust her, how do you know she's not going to tell your wife? One of my very closest friends from childhood, his wife is having a baby. I said to him, I said, do you want a boy or a girl? He thought about it. He said, I wanted a blowjob. Really mournful. I like getting a blowjob off the missus. I don't, I don't know if you get this. I don't know if you get a blowjob off my missus. But the thing I like, I think the thing all men enjoy about oral sex from our partners, ladies, it's not, not anything sexual. It's the peace and quiet. If you've ever heard a man going, oh, 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 as you're going down on him, that's not sexual ecstasy. That's not your incredible technique. That, oh, oh, oh. Oh. That's the sound of a man not being asked a question. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Good night. <laughs>
that in a dimly lit room, Travolta can reach over and pick out three separate items. I want to buy these pants and wear them everywhere I go. And this is why I don't think these guys should get a fucking dime. Because the guy said, and a few minutes later, really? You kept massaging him? How many legitimate interactions do you people have on a daily basis where if you grab somebody's scrotum, you would only get a firm warning? I picture you're at the dentist. He gets a little too close to you. You're like, Ugh. Is he gonna go up, 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 come on now? Third time I've told you to quit jabbing and poking my bag like that. Four more times and you're out of here. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I have a, a throat issue tonight, so I apologize. I ate something I shouldn't have eaten, so now my throat's like all fucked up and clearing your throat is just disgusting. Um, especially if you're hitting on somebody, it's just creepy if you're talking to a girl and you're like, so I thought we could have. <clears throat> It's even worse if you're going down on her. Because she's just going to blame herself. Be like, ah, ah. Ah. Oh, no, 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 it's not you, it's me. Oh, I had a dairy product earlier. On my way over, I was eating little blocks of cheese out of a baggie. The problem with clearing your throat is you always sound like you're lying. Even if you're telling the truth, you sound like a liar. Did you touch that child? <clears throat> no. <laughs> then you gotta quickly turn your Penn State hat around. <laughs> hey, look, I know the Penn State scandal was a tragic event, but for comedians, it was a dream come true. Was anybody surprised that he was convicted? I mean, I think we all knew from the very beginning. When you heard that a man named Jerry Sandusky was accused of pedophilia, didn't it just sound right? Who molested those kids? Sandusky. I'll bet he did. What happened? McQueary turned him in. Ugh. Who's McQueary? The redhead! Oh. When I heard he got turned in by a redhead, I almost felt bad for Jerry Sandusky. Because that's the last thing you need when you're molesting a kid in the shower to look out and see Chucky staring at you. His fucking stupid freckles glistening in the shower mist. That awful Pittsburgh accent. What's going on in there? What's going on? And you're like, ah, oh, boy, I know he's gonna snitch. The only thing worse than a molesting coach is a tattling ginger. And you know what I learned from that case? I learned something very important. Because there's a line of thinking that when you get in trouble, the thing to do is shut your mouth and lawyer up. Talk to nobody but your attorney. And I've always thought, no, fuck that. Go out, proclaim your innocence. And then I heard Sandusky doing all these interviews. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, shut your mouth. Lawyer up. I've never had anybody convince me of their guilt by proclaiming their innocence. I just didn't believe his excuses. Uh, because somebody said to him, what was going on in that shower? And Sandusky said, oh, that was horseplay. Horseplay? You think he would have talked that over with a friend before he said that to the media? First of all, nobody under 90 says horseplay. And has that ever been an acceptable explanation for a perceived child molesting? What was going, what was going on in there? A little horseplay. Oh, thank God. Because for a second, it looked like you were fucking that young boy up against the wall. And that slapping sound. Thank God it was just a little good nature joshing around. Whew, guess that was red Kool-Aid running down the drain. Hey, hey, it's okay to laugh. This stuff is anti-pedophile. So if you're offended by this material, like if you're with somebody and they're like, I don't think that's appropriate, check their hard drive. I don't understand pedophile.
pedophiles. I just don't understand a sexual attraction for children. I fucking hate kids. I don't even like them as friends. How do you want to fuck one of those little annoying monsters? Other energy, the incessant questions alone would kill my erection. Why is the sky blue? Is there a Santa Claus? Shut up, would you? I would never let anybody with hands that sticky grab my dick. I don't even like being in a friend's house if they have kids. Because, you know, you ever have like a, a misunderstanding with a friend's kids? It's fucking scary. You're sitting in the living room, one of their kids comes in, he falls down and starts crying. And all you're thinking is, I'm going to prison. Because I'm alone in a room with a crying child. And your instinct is to go and help him up. But fuck that, I'm not picking him up, because that's when the mother's going to come in. What's going on? Oh, nothing. Your baby's crying and I'm touching him, that's all. And kids suck. You know the kid's not going to bail you out. No, 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 ma, I was running around like an asshole and I fell. It's totally my fault. The kid's just going to cry louder. Ah! Point at his genitals. Ah! Baba! I don't, I don't move a muscle. I don't care if he has bones sticking out. I am not getting off that sofa. The mother will come in. What's the matter? I don't know, lady, but I didn't fuck him. I'll tell you that much. Call the ambulance and then swab his mouth and anus because there is none of me on him. That clumsy attention whore bag of shit is your problem, lady. Thank you guys very much. You're a great crowd. Thank you. By the way, Jim does children's parties. If any of you need him, he'll be at your house tomorrow morning. I'd like to get a big a round of applause for Scott Price and the band, please. <laughs> Scott Price and our band. How are you, Scott? Doing pretty well, but I'm thinking the show is great. Good. It's really good to talk to you. Likewise. Thank you. Peace. Hope you're having a good time. I'm having a great time. I got a semi and I'm draining out of my asshole. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Amy Schumer did so well at last year's Comedy Central roast of Charlie Sheen that Comedy Central gave her her own show, and Charlie Sheen gave her venereal words. Please welcome the highly genial Amy Schumer. Karma's real. So, I know people hate that joke if they have AIDS. Uh, so if you didn't laugh, get tested. So, what a beautiful theater. I don't know which way to face in here. It's like sex. Uh, I'll just do what I usually do. Cry. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Um, so I'm really excited. I have a little bit of news to share with you guys. I, uh, I finally just slept with my high school crush. Huh? Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. But I swear now he like expects me to go to his graduation. <laughs> like I know where I'm going to be in three years. Right? And I'm like, whoa. Slow it down, kids, right? Fucking little kids. Oh. I'm joking. Some of you, I would never fuck a kid. I'm um, like Norton, I would never. I shouldn't say never. You don't know who you're going to meet. But, uh... So my mom's a cunt. Hear me out on this. What a cunt. I swear. She's always bragging about the dumbest shit. The other day she was telling me and my sister, she's like, you know, I can still fit in my wedding dress. We were like, oh my God, who cares, right? I mean, it is weird that she's the same size now as she was when she was eight months pregnant, but I just... Oh 
I don't think bragging's cool. Huh? So I just went through a breakup. I was dating this guy. You guys probably have heard of it. Do you guys know Fred Willard? Um, I did that once, though. I walked in on a boyfriend masturbating. He was like, are you mad? I was like, uh, no, but you seem to be. Holy shit. Like, does it owe you money? Like, why? This guy. Ugh. I thought he was going to break up with me the whole time for the lamest reason. Because I wouldn't swallow. But I have a nut allergy. What did he expect? I'm going to risk my life? For his empty calories? No. Stop telling us it's good for our skin. Fuck you. What girl's like, oh, I didn't know. This is great. Oh. Guys are so fucking gross, aren't they? With their cut. They're so gross. I just had sex with a guy. More semen than you've ever seen in your life. I was like, did you just get out of jail? Uh, it's like, why have I been slimed? What's happening here? Was I on double dare? But guys are gross. That's what they want. If it were up to men, at the end, we'd always look like Carrie in the prom scene. Just, ah. Uh, I've never had a guy come on my face. I, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm always so, oh my God, your support means the world. Um, I'm always scared somebody's gonna go for it. And I'll be like, no, my dad loved me. Uh, or just pull out a tiny umbrella at the last second. Not on my watch. I'm single again. I'm dating. I go out with, I just went out with this really hot guy. And uh, so I was pretending to be a good person, you know. I was saying shit like, uh, I love kids and I'm not racist. Uh, vague lies, you know. And it's hard. You have to like pretend to be, yeah, I like pretend like I want to use a condom. You know, you have to say, I say something kind of cute, but true. I'll be like, uh, you're going to want to wear this. I've had a busy month. <laughs> I'm trying to go to black guys. That's what I want to do. I've never done it. I, uh, I guess not tonight. Uh, this looks like a clan meeting, but... I can't believe I've never done it. I'm built for it. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I just, uh, I know a lot of white chicks are scared. You know what they say? Once you go black, your parents don't talk to you anymore. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? I was talking about this the other day. I was hanging out with literally all my black friends. And, uh... What was she saying? She was like, girl. Like, I won't do some racist impression. <laughs> Don't worry. But she was like, girl. You know, because we were like mid-double dutch. And, uh... I was just like, stop yelling. You know, we're not at the movies. But... So before I get out of here, I just really quick want to uh, leave you guys with this. Um, my sister, uh, my little sister, used to uh, cut herself. amazing and she's hilarious you know the difference between amy's vagina and her asshole exactly no one does that's what i was preparing 
And with that, I would like to say, this is the best segue of my career. I love this city. <laughs> I do. I do. It's wonderful people. I'm not shitting you. And it's beautiful women. And even a dude or two that have made one of my nuts tremble. And a little butt leakage. And uh, I made a little video here of strolling around the city of Montreal. And I am proud to introduce it right now. And uh, that's the introduction. Please roll the video. So pretty here. Mount Royal. Mm. Look, a lot of beautiful women here in Montreal. I love this thing in the short circle. Yeah, that's the reference, right? Get some of that. Oh, this is nice. It looks like uh, what the maid in the Jetsons. Remember that? He was smart. He was kind. He was important. Please don't change your channel. The town's really busy now during the Olympics. Oh, I love you. I love you too. Thank you. I will. I will. It's so awkward when your ex shows up in your shoots. Nice to see you. Hi. It's a pleasure. I'm good. My, most of my rash is cleared up. It's infectious. And you're Bob's Bob. I love Bob's. I'm, they call me. Yeah, I know what you meant. You didn't mean. You didn't mean that. I know what he meant. He meant he loves guys bobbing on him. You better get that release sign. You might need it. How are you? Nice to see you. That was very nice. They don't speak English, but they must have seen me in a foreign tongue, which is something I had up my ass a couple weeks ago. You been drinking? <laughs> Just be a good boy. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. I liked your work in Into the Wild. You were really good. Neil Hirsch, I can't believe it. Thank you. We are on the live Triple X show on JFL on the movie network right now. Awesome. Have a good time. I did that whole family once. Shea Cox, this place is called. Cox, Q Q U E X. That's Cox, right? I don't know. I wonder what they have in there. Tonight's specials are cake and cock, and we're out of cake. You want me to take a picture of your daughter? With your daughter? You don't want me with your daughter. Yes, I do. Okay. That's a, that's a man and a woman, and I'm not sure what, lying on the ground. Somebody's going to get pregnant. Somebody's butthole smells. I'm not sure. I don't know how you're going to get releases signed on them. I was going to ask him if he ever ate his wife's poutine, but she was right next to him, and it just sounds wrong. When you mention poutine, you hear that? An angel gets its wings. It's the color of poutine. If you drink a gallon of blue paint, take a shit. This is the mouth of the St. Lawrence Seaway. Sorry. I shouldn't have called him that. Nice to see you. You were awesome in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And people that love each other come here to fuck right by this rail. It's known for that. These two are going to nail each other. They're going to stand in front of that rail. That's what happens every day at this time. And they're going to just pound deep into each other as much as they can until one of them has some kind of fluid drip out of them, probably brown because they're older. And the women are pretty here, aren't they? Hello, can, hey, how are you, sir? Very good. I'm Bob. Nice to meet you. What's your name, sir? Andre. Andre, could I ask you a favor? Uh, is it possible you could give me a ride? Sure, it's no problem. I mean, just you. Yeah. I want to ride on you. On me, on uh, I smell good food and drunk people. Hey, Bob. Uh, we don't go Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the more famous now. Here you go. I read that. I want her to be. I'm going to go talk to her. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Hi. Hi. I got a, I got a crew and everything, so I apologize for this. Uh, I got some of those on me. Women in Montreal are very beautiful, and you are very beautiful. Thank you. So I'm I'm uh, I'm here for a while. Just like that. Like the mold. That depends. John Stevens still there? Yes. 
I truly do love this city, so thank you uh, for everything, although I never met most of you. This next thing is a treat for you. You actually should be very excited. This next comic is a legendary performer from the Conan O'Brien show. That's right. That's what I'm fucking talking about. The last time he visited Quebec, he offended French Canadians so much that he briefly became this country's most hated show business puppet, second only to Ben Mulrooney. Please welcome my favorite bitch, Triumph, the insult comic dog! <laughs> Saget, everyone! Bob, are you still here? The Jew underneath can't see. Bob Saget, one of the most respected comics in the business, because he's so very, very rich. Bob, you made so much money on all the great shitty shows you did. So much money. You can retire, Bob. And judging by tonight's performance, you already have. Saget. Saget. That doesn't sound right. It sounds like, you know what it sounds? It almost sounds like a pejorative word for homosexuals. Saget. What word am I thinking of? It's a terrible word. What is it? It's like the worst thing you can call a homosexual. Saget. Saget. Oh, now I remember the word. John Stamos. <laughs> Sorry, my French isn't too good. Gets a little iffy past, I surrender. Stop it! Stop it! I promised I wouldn't do that. You know, a lot has changed since I was last in Montreal. Celine Dion bought Schwartz's Delicatessen. Schwartz's, a deli that's been around since the 20s. But you know what? It makes sense. I've seen Celine's husband. She's used to smoking meat that's a century old. Got to do the smoking meat joke. I drew the short cigar. Seriously, though, how can you fuck someone that over? If I want something to fall apart while I'm riding it, I'll cross the Champlain Bridge. All right, I'm not here to make fun of Quebec, I swear. Poor Quebec! You know, you people, you don't get the respect you deserve. You know, between us, the rest of Canada considers you guys second-class citizens. You're like the Canada of Canada. Seriously, I got a lot of shit last time, back in 2004, whenever it was, I don't even remember. But to make up for it, I'm going to do something different tonight. Tonight, I'm going to poop on every other province and territory in Canada. Every other one. Here's the jokes. Let's look at this shit. Okay, here we go. We got the map. The nice map. Look at this. Here we go. Okay, British Columbia. Where is it? Yes. BC, as they call it. You know, you can smoke pot in BC, but there's still a very severe punishment. You have to pee in BC. Right, what's next? There are so many trees. Wait, I'm supposed to be reading. <laughs> there are so many trees in British Columbia. It's the only place where you can find wood that doesn't have Scott Thompson's teeth marks halfway down. Hasn't he suffered enough? Okay, Saskatchewan, check it out. Saskatchewan is home to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Training Academy. I have to ask, how can you take a cop seriously when he looks like a doorman? <laughs> Officer, could you get my badge, please? I want to report a crime. Someone broke into my minibar. Officer. <laughs> no, it's great. They have that great town there, Regina. It's a great name for a city. I guess they felt that was classier than Russi. Runt and and Rurberger. 
Saskatchewan, you know the people there are very sad right now because they're losing television funding. Oh no! Where will I get my fix of gas station related comedy? How could you do this? I'm all right. I'm still reeling from losing the hobo dog detective. <laughs> Canadian television is shit. You notice every region that can't get American shows likes to need, they club seals in their spare time in those regions. Seriously, even hitting an animal is less depressing than watching Little Mosque on the Prairie. <laughs> or Stephen and Chris. Stephen and Chris, come on. If I want to watch gay men host a talk show, I'll stick to Anderson Cooper and Rosie O'Donnell. Alberta. Yes, Calgary. I've been to Calgary. Now I can die. I thought, I thought the Calgary stampede was people trying to leave. Calgary is the only place where rodeo clown is a serious career goal. But Alberta has huge oil reserves. The only other place in Canada where you'll find that much oil is Stephen and Chris's futon. <laughs> Gratuitous, but fun. Calgary Flames lost the Stanley Cup Finals uh, back in the day to the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's right, they lost to a hockey team from Florida. That's like me losing a ball licking contest to a goldfish. <laughs> Manitoba! Yes, for when Minnesota gets just too exciting. <laughs> Manitoba, it's called the land of a hundred thousand lakes. People spend all their time there fishing, looking at wild animals and praying to die. <laughs> oh, look at the lake right next to the other lake. And it's across that lake from another lake. Oh no, yet he's so many choices. Oh, which one to drown myself in? Manitoba. Ontario. You love this town. They think they're so cool like New York. Come on, the bars fucking close at two. It's not New York, it's Salt Lake City. Great Ontario, that's the place that originated and caused Bieber fever. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ontario. That kid is Canada's equivalent of the monkey who started AIDS. I kid Justin, he's great. Toronto, it's the only city though, you have to give them credit, they're the only city that has a basketball team. In, in Canada. Yes, Toronto is home to the Raptors. So that gives it two things Ontario's never had before. An NBA team and black people. Don Cherry from, from Ontario voted one of the greatest Canadians. Number seven, a man who used to award players black and Decker drills for the best hits of the week. He likes the violence. No surprise, he dresses like he slaps bitches for a living. Nova Scotia! Nova Scotia. I was there, you know, I didn't enjoy it. The place, I didn't like Nova Scotia because the whole place stinks like rotten fish. Then someone explained, look, it's just Anne Murray doing aerobics. Is nobody's pussy sacred? What is wrong with not Anne Murray? <laughs> New Brunswick. Yes, they've got Moncton, a city where the big tourist attraction is the tide coming in. Yes, because that's so unique in a coastal city. You may as well brag about sand and seagull shit. Prince Edward Island. Where the fuck is that? Are you kidding me? I can't even, that's a province, I can't even see it. It's like trying to find a clitoris in a sheep dog. All right, I can't, one more joke, Yukon. Oh, I, you like Yukon? Yes, I guess you like ice fucking cold weather. I was up there, I tried to eat my poop and I chipped the tooth. 
None of it in Northwest Territories. I'll get you next time. You've been a great crowd. Sorry me to Popeye.
wanted to see gay porn. She was like, I want to rent some gay porn. And I was like, fuck, if, if you want to see gay porn, I'm comfortable enough in my sexuality to watch two guys fucking, no problem. I'm comfortable, we're going to rent some gay porn. And this is before the internet, so we actually had to go out to get the gay porn. So we go to the video store. My wife goes into the video store. I wait in the car because I'm more comfortable in a car. And <laughs> she rents a fucking movie. We start the movie. It's these two guys that are firemen. So it's two firemen at the fire station and they're talking about fires. They're like, oh, we're all alone tonight. I hope there aren't any fires because I don't know if we can handle. Do you think we can handle a fire? Just me and you, I think you could handle a fire. No, you're stronger than me. You could handle. And then they start talking about who's stronger and they're flexing each other's muscles. They start taking their clothes off. They take their shirts off, their pants off, their underwear off. They start sucking each other's cocks. I was like, you fucking assholes. If there's a fire, we're all in danger. I, it's just a stupid joke. I look over at my wife. I figure she's going to be cracking up. Nothing. No, she doesn't even know I'm still there. She was really into the gay porn. Like, I could I could sense it. Like, I, she didn't tell me, but I could tell because she was masturbating. And she was... So she's masturbating with the gay porn. So I got my wife masturbating. I got these two fucking gay guys sucking each other's cocks. I am super comfortable. And so I'm watching this. My wife starts coming towards me. She comes towards me, starts rubbing my legs, starts rubbing my chest, rubbing my balls. She goes to pull my dick out to suck on it. And I was like, I'm watching a movie here. Because I'm comfortable enough to watch gay porn, but he isn't, okay? He was in the basement crying. He wanted to call 911. He was afraid those two fucking firemen were going to show up. I, 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 I don't have kids. That's, uh, <laughs> we just, we were talking about gay porn. <laughs> and then go back to kids. But here's the thing. If, if you have kids, you shouldn't over protect them. I saw this woman last winter on the news. She was talking about drinking and driving. And she was like, we got to lower the limit across Canada to 0 0.05. We got to put it to 0 0.05 because people are getting drunk and they're taking their cars and they're hitting our children. We got to protect the kids. We got to keep the kids safe because people are drunk and they're hitting our kids. And I was like, really? When? When are kids outside? They're outside during the fucking day. So if you really want to protect the kids during the day, put the limit during the day, 0, 0.0, right? You do that, kids are safe, supper time kids come in, then you put the limit to 0 0.05, right? 7, 8 at night, they're all indoors, you bring it back up to 0 0.08. 10 o'clock, they're asleep, you bring it up to 1.2. Midnight, 3.7. Two in the morning, we're doing coke with the cops. Cause seriously. Seriously. If I get shit face, I hit your kid at four in the morning. What the fuck was he doing outside? I, I, I don't, uh, I, I was going to say I don't drink, but I'm thirsty. So I don't drink, well, I still drink beer and I drink like rum and vodka and wine for breakfast, but that's, that's it. I don't drink shots anymore because I used to get angry. Like I was a violent drunk. I'd get into fights. Last time I got drunk, I, I, I got into a fight. And at first I thought it was because of the booze, but then I realized that wasn't it. It was the other guy's fault. The other guy was a fucking asshole. Like the other guy, I didn't do anything to him, comes up to me, rolls on my foot with his wheelchair. He was a fucking and he couldn't fight for, you know, when you're fighting someone, you expect a punch, a kick. You don't expect the other guy's piss bag to explode. That's, that's fucking cheating. And he, see, I did that joke. I did that joke one time. I was doing a benefit for the Special Olympics. And I did that joke and they went crazy because they're retarded and they laugh at everything. But they do. They're the best crowds ever. You show them a color, they're like, I like orange. And they... All of them, not just the ones with the helmet during the meal. All of them. They fucking love me. I have a lot of handicapped fans. A lot of my fans are in wheelchairs. And there's one of them, he's quadriplegic. He's paralyzed from the neck down. He often comes to see my show, paralyzed from ear down. So there's nothing on his body that works. Like you touch him, he doesn't know. He gets stabbed, he's going to find out on the news. Like he's...
super, super handicapped, but he can move his wheelchair himself. He has a thing to control it with his mouth. Let's say he does this huh, with the tongue, check goes left, goes right, moves forwards, backwards. It's all the mouth that does everything. It's fucking awesome, especially during a comedy show. Because every time he laughs, he moves forward. He bumps into, he ends up outside halfway through a joke. There's a, I'll, I'll finish with the story. I go, give her, give her jab something up your ass. Have you, give her when you're blowing them, you jam stuff up his ass, you ever do that? Because I notice you should never tell anyone when you do that. Because the male G-spot's in the asshole, but if you tell someone you jam something up your ass, they're going to look at you weird. Like this one time, I told my friend that I'd already jammed something up my ass. He looked at me and he was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So I knew he was going to try it soon. And he, he did. He was married to this girl that was super jealous. Like they'd been married for nine years and he still had to wear a condom after nine years because she was sure he was cheating on her. And he never did, but she was always sure he was cheating on him and, and cheating on her. And he, he had no life. And this one time she left, right? And uh, she goes to work, he's at home and he starts thinking about what I told him. He's like, fuck it, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna jam something up my ass. And he did. And the only thing he found was a screwdriver. So he was like, that's kind of disgusting. So he put, he put a condom over the handle and actually two condoms over the handle to jam them up his ass. And when his wife got back from work, he didn't tell her he had done that. Cause no guy, like who's gonna brag? Like no guy is gonna go, what'd you do today? I jammed shit up my ass. Don't touch a remote, it's sticky. So he, she gets home. She's like, what'd you do today? He was nervous, like nothing. I didn't do anything. She's like, you didn't? Then he got kind of nervous because he started thinking about what he had done. So he was like, I didn't do anything. Swear to God. The more he got nervous, the more she thought he was cheating on her. So she goes to the bedroom, grabs a box of condoms, starts counting the condoms in the box, saw that two were missing. She fucking lost it. She went back to the living room. She was like, you fucking asshole. You cheated on me. No, yes, you did. You fucking cheated on me. I counted the condoms. Two are missing. If you didn't cheat, what did you do? And he was like, well, I, <laughs> I cheated on you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. This is awesome, isn't it? This award-winning comedian is truly exceptional. He is known to time his set by how many drinks he's had. Lucky for you all tonight, he's been rehearsing since noon. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Wilmot! Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice to be here. Fuck off. I don't like that. It's okay. So I just ran from another gig. Have they said cunt yet? Oh, well then, good, we're in. It's my favorite dirty word, cunt. That's the last one we've got. Shit, piss, fuck. They're in cartoons now, but not cunt. Cunt's not in cartoons. Cunt's out there somewhere right now, hiding behind a bush, waiting to offend you. I love the sound of the word cunt. It sounds like when you whip a hockey puck into a swimming pool. Cunt. It is a noise. It's a sound I make with my face. So, uh, I guess what I'm trying to talk about is love. Uh, I've been with the same woman now for 26 years of my life, and I'll tell you why. Uh, once a week, whether I like it or not, I go down on her. And that's what love's all about. Women suck cock once a week. Whether you like to or not, just blow them, get it over with. I go down on my lady once a week on garbage day. That's how I can remember. Not, no... Not because of the link between her vagina and garbage. It's just a, a weekly reminder. Uh, like, I, I would never do it, you know, on compost day. I would never do it on compost day. Because I never want to get those two things mixed up. You know, that, that beautiful moment and then having to go down on my wife. So I, I don't like, cut it down the middle. I'm not even good at cunnilingus. And fuck, I've been together. So I've been with her so long now that I, I tend to fall asleep uh, midway through. You know, it, it's dark, it's quiet, finally a little me time. And then her, her pubic hair tickles my forehead and I'm off. I, I talk dirty uh, throughout, uh, basically to stay awake. Like, uh, ooh, I'm licking your pussy. Oh, 
I'm licking your hot, hot pussy, but not really hot. It's more, uh, more warm, actually. And, but my God, uh, you can really hear yourself think down here. This is a, this is fantastic. Uh, tickety, tickety, and then I'm out. But uh, luckily, my snoring gets her off. So she just moves my face around her clit. Just singing lullabies, you know what I mean? If I do wake up, she's kind enough to tell me about her day, then off I go. Fuck off, it's a dirty joke, relax. It's all about love, that's my point. She still sits on my face, that's love. She sits when I want her to, not as a surprise. She just doesn't hover above my fucking head waiting for the alarm clock to go off. You know, it's what, I, it's what I wanted to. She lowers her stuff on my face. And I think that's what well, she doesn't actually sit on my face. Uh, that's more of a saying. She hovers uh, slightly above my face, which isn't true either. She's, a, she's in her 50s now and her knees give out. And she eventually does actually sit on my face. I get about a minute hover at best. And then about 20 seconds in, I can hear from above. Oh, and that means... I have 30 seconds to get the fuck out of there before her ass or the bear trap, as I like to call it, comes down and captures my fucking skull. Now my head's up her ass. I can't see. I can't hear. And her memory's going, so she forgets I'm down there. She just starts walking through the gardens with my head up her ass, and the neighbor's kids think we have a centaur. Now... When I call her my old lady, don't get pissed off, women. You know, I'm her old man, so don't get all pissy and form a giant woman and come up here and attack me. I've always had that fear of women. You piss off more than five, they morph into a big one. There's some kind of crazy five-woman woman coming at you. And he just comes at you, grabs a regular-sized woman on the way over, just beats you to death with the regular-sized woman, then sticks her vagina on your head, then grabs the knees and cracks your fucking neck. Leaving you there dead on the street with your head smelling of vagina juice. Well, I don't want to die that way. And when I say juice, ladies, that was the, the best liquid I could come up with for the joke. Juice, it's lovely, it's nectar, it's good for you, it's God's gift to humanity. I could have said gravy, but I didn't say gravy. You know why? Because I respect vagina people, or women, as you prefer to be called. See? I live in uh, Britain most of the time. I love doing dirty jokes. And in London, it's funny because they can get a little nervous, you know? I do this open mic with a buddy of mine, Tiffany, and she goes on and tells this story about her shitting her pants. And the English crowd was like, oh, no. That's not funny, one shitting one's pants. That's, fuck you, when has that not been funny? When has shitting your pants never been fucking funny? The three times I shit myself as an adult, each one was fucking hilarious. Each fucking one. One, the first time, midway through a coughing fit in front of my refrigerator. I, I wasn't even wearing pants. I was in a bathrobe, so nothing stopped it. Midway through a fucking coughing fit, my asshole ballooned. Fuck me, that's how loose it was. My asshole pronounced the letter L. Bloomed. Perfect circle of hot, wet shit. Right below me, my fucking, my kids and my lady, they're in the dining room. Yeah, are you okay? Are you, I'm fine. Stay out of here, I'm fine. I have never moved that fucking fast in my life. Getting a fucking paper towel cleaning the shit off the wipe with my ass and throwing it out the fucking window hoping the dog will eat it. My God. And then I moved on. And that's my point to you people, you wonderful people here in Montreal. Just move on. Sit yourself and walk. Be proud. You'll laugh eventually. Second time. On a flight from Toronto to Orlando, Florida, trying to hold back a sneeze. We've all been warned, 
by our parents when we were younger, don't, don't, uh, don't hold back a sneeze because uh, you'll burst blood vessels and your eyes uh, will go red. Obviously, not enough of a threat. We've, we've all held in sneezes. If she were to have told me, no, if you hold in a, in a sneeze, you'll shit your pants on a flight to Disney World. Should have just sneezed. Why the fuck did I hold that in? What? I, I did. And bang, just shit my fucking pants that fast. Violent bang. Holy fuck. What's funny about it is I had a window seat, so I had to go by two people. Which, now that took me 10 fucking years to laugh about. But one morning I woke up and I just started laughing. There's nothing else you can do. Third time was in this beautiful city of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, at the Place Bonaventure Hotel uh, not too long ago. I uh, shit in the jacuzzi. And for the weird part is, for no other reason, I just wanted to. The kids were laughing and playing in there and it fucked me. So I, I just dropped one in there and left. They weren't my kids. Fuck them. I wasn't staying. I wasn't even staying at the hotel. I don't know why I even tell fuck jokes anymore as a professional comedian. I don't fuck anymore. I'm drunk and flaccid. My balls have dropped to such a degree now that I can't fuck because of the noise they make. Very quietly, they can. You can just hear a spank or bum. You know. Just, Spanky, 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 spanky. And it's and it's odd rhythm because as you go in, nothing. But as you pull out, spanky, 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 spanky. Then you don't give a fuck. Spanky, spanky. And you try to cough over it. <coughs> spanky. <coughs> then you come up with excuses. Spanky, honey, I think kids are throwing meat at the window again. Fucking kids. Anyway, you've always been a wonderful audience. I always loved this town. You're like Toronto's mistress. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Fuck yourselves. Fucky poopy. Farty fucky. Ladies and gentlemen, this is almost the end of our show, but I gotta be honest with you, we're on television, you people all came here tonight, it's been a beautiful night, but we need a, uh, I feel like we need a cleansing, I feel like we need a big finish that doesn't leave you people here, and you people at home feeling just dirty and nasty and vile and, and, and butt infused, so I think we should just change the pace and just have some sweet choir music, if we could. <laughs> Uh, I'm, really, I'm really sorry. You guys are awesome. Seriously, it's a Canadian glee. I fucking love it. It's beautiful. I'm really sorry. That was really nice. You guys liked it, right? Give them a round of applause. They were very good and they were earnest. And there was no filth in it. But I just had this feeling inside of me, deep inside of me, that that doesn't feel right for the end of this show, and I think I know what is missing. Oh my god. I know that song. This is the perfect way to end the show. That is the intro to Dr. Dre's song, Bitches Ain't Shit, and here to sing it is my dear friend, Ben Folt. <laughs> Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks Lick on these nuts and suck the dick Get the fuck out after you're done And I hops my ride to make a quick run I used to know a bitch named Eric Wright We used to roll around and hug the hoes at night Tighter than a motherfucking gangster beats Then we was ballin' on the motherfucking Compton streets
Peep that shit got deep and it was on. Number one song after number one song. Long as my motherfucking pockets was fat, I didn't give a fuck where the bitch was at. She was hanging with the white shit, doing the shit she do. Ducking on his dick just to get a buck or two. And the end was what she got meant nothing. And now she's suing with the shit she be doing ain't shit. She found herself short. Yeah, Bob, you know what I'm talking about. I once had a bitch named Mandy Mae. Used to be up in them guts like every day. The pussy was the bomb. Had a nigga on sprung. I was in love like a motherfucker doing the pro job. The homies used to tell me that you wasn't no good. But I'm the maniac in black, Mr. Snoopy Swift. So I'm bigger niggas wouldn't trip in my guess what? Yeah, fuck yeah, I'm a one time. Back in the motherfucking county jail. Six months on my chest, now it's not the bill. It gets released on a hot sunny day. Scooped in a coop, sleep, you got to dance. Welcome to the boy who picked up the county blues. If I have a second, already I got to do some motherfucking change. Move down the block, so we groove down the block. See my girl's house tray, pass the clock. Kick in the dough, I look on the floor. It's my little cousin Dad's, and he's fucking my hoe. I uncock my shit. I'm heartbroken, but I'm still loved. Three! Did you see no bitch named Eric Wright? Who used to roll around and fuck the hoes at night? Cutter than a motherfucking gangster bitch. We was born on the motherfucking goddamn streets. Keep that shit got deep and it was on. Number one song after number one song. Lost my motherfucking pockets was fat. I didn't give a shit. She was hanging with the white bitch, doing the shit she do. Sucking on his tongue just to get in the black or two. In the end, what she got meant nothing. And now she's silly, cause the shit she be doing ain't shit. It's just can't hide the streets. 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 All the children sing. It just can't hide. You fucking sing that song and we're done. Then, folks, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, Jimmy Carr, Jim Norton, Amy Schumer, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, Mike Ward, Mike Wilmot, the choir.
Humor. You can't have the sweet. You're on mom TV. 